I'm Jura the Time Traveler and this is my lifestyle time travel blog. Today we are talking about Amazons, the warrior women. Amazon women were really respected in the ancient Greek culture. They were represented as fierce warrior women equal of men. They lived in the barbarian territories north and east of the Mediterranean world. Mythologically, they were daughters of Ares, the god of war, and nymph Harmonia. And they appear in numerous Greek myths. They fought with some of the greatest Greek heroes such as Theseus, Heracles and Achilles. Did someone mention Achilles? Yes. Do you have some story, I have story about... story about Achilles. Well, well, Amazons were involved in Trojan War and they were on the side of Trojans. Obviously. Led by their queen Penthesilia. And there was, of course, a huge battle and they fought very courageously. And at one point, Penthesilia and Achilles fought one-on-one. -on -one. And it was a very tense fight, but unfortunately, Penthesilia was killed by Achilles. And what about Heracles and his relation with Amazons? Well, another queen appears in that story mm -hmm. and her name was Hippolyta. And she was connected to nine tasks of Heracles' labor and he was sent by King Aristius to obtain Hippolyta's belt. She was impressed by Heracles and she gave him willingly belt and they had a little something, little something on his belt. Are you telling me that she fell in love with Heracles? Impossible! Okay. <laughs> Unfortunately, Hera appears again and she's, she's not happy. Again with this but, woman? Yes. And this time she disguised herself as one of the Amazons. She's the master of disguise. <laughs> and of course she spread the rumor that Hercules was there to abduct Hippolyta. <gasps> what the... That rumor enraged other Amazons, so they attacked the boat on which Heracles and Hippolyta were. And it was a great battle, but Heracles killed Hippolyta, took the belt and fled. Back home. But back home... Cowardly move. I didn't expect that from Heracles. Many, He's a hero. Many... He's a hero, not a coward. And what about Theseus? That's all. Okay, guess I'll have to do this all by myself, like everything. Okay, so there is another version of this myth of Heracles. So, in this version, Theseus followed Heracles to the land of the Amazons. So, in this version, Theseus fell in love with Hippolyta or her sister Antiope, and he wanted to take her back to Greece. And in some versions, she followed Theseus willingly, in others, he abducted her. Either way, she left her homeland and moved to Athens. But the other Amazons didn't like that, especially the version that she was abducted. So they went to Athens. They attacked Theseus to save one of them. And this invasion of Amazon women is known as Attic War. Unfortunately, or luckily, depends on which side you're on, Theseus won. But the bravery of Amazon women was celebrated. Mythologically, the final destruction of Amazons is said to be on island Samos. They were defeated by Dionysus and his war elephants from India. And Pluto says that this battlefield at Foyan can be visited. And that is red because of the soil that was stained by blood of Amazons and that bones of those animals, those elephants, can be seen. Not only there, but also at the temple of Hera. But actually, this land is naturally red in color and those bones that were peeking through this land were actually the remains of mammoths. But as I've said at the beginning of this story, Amazons were really respected in the Greek culture. So a lot of landmarks, tombs and memorials were attributed to them. For example, the tombs of Antiope and Molpodia in Athens. Actually, there were a lot of tombs discovered at Athens at that time. And those tombs contained luxury jewelry as well as the weaponry. And the most striking was 
that those tombs also contained arrows and arrows were connected to the Amazon women. So here's what was actually happening. They connected weapons and jewelry to women, the warrior women. But these tombs probably belonged to some important figures from the Bronze Age, Aegean Bronze Age, so from the Mycenaean period. And in these tombs both men and women were buried. And some objects were kept as relics, especially that golden belt, that golden war belt of Hippolyte. The belt and cave decorated with gold flakes were held as relics at the temple of Hera near Tiryns. Plutarch says that in 338 BC some Greek soldiers were digging a trench and while they were doing that they discovered a stone carving of a wounded Amazon. And this happened at Hieronea. And here we have some archaic tombs, so this carving probably belonged to one of them. And they were fascinated by this object because it is a testimony of a time that was before them, from some mythological time. Battles with Amazon women were represented in Greek art. One of the most famous examples of this is Amazonomachy on the temple of Parthenon in Athens. And Amazon women were also celebrated at Amazoneum, a shrine dedicated to them at the Hill of Ice. But who were actually these fierce women? Well, even Greek historians connected them to Scythians. And Scythians is a name for diverse but culturally related nomadic steppe tribes that lived on the land from Black Sea to the Central Asia. And at the bank of the Black Sea, Greeks came in contact with Scythians, especially during the time when they established colonies. And there are two different depictions of Amazon women in the Greek history. One is that they were fierce warrior women equal to men who fought in wars until the marriage. And the second is a bit more extreme and that is that they are a kingdom of husband killers. But the first one is probably true. I mean, not probably, definitely true. Herodotus says that it was common for younger women to prove themselves in battles, but older women chose which battles wanted to fight or they went to war when it was really necessary. And Hippocrates has one of the best descriptions of Scythian women. He says that they rode horseback and their primary weapon was bow and arrow. They rode and participated in battles until they were maidens and that they can lose their virginity only when they've killed three enemies. And after that, that they can cohabitate only when they've performed sacred rite. And after that, they could stop riding, but only until the full-scale expedition. Also, there is one interesting myth that even Hippocrates mentions, and that is that Amazon women didn't have a right breast. That happened when they were little. So, mothers took burning bronze object and implemented it on the right breast of their daughters, so that all the growth and strength can go to the right shoulder and arm. I mean, it doesn't make any sense, and it's questionable if it even happened, but it is one motive that keeps on repeating. Herodotus says that Scythian women wore exactly the same colorful clothes as men and that they wore helmets, overcoats and belts from animal skins, wild animal skins. So until recently these warrior women were considered a myth. So around 1000 armed individuals were buried in Kurgans in those burial mounds that are attributed to Scythians, Sarmatians and similar tribes. From that number, these DNA analyses have confirmed that at least 300 belonged to women. All of these individuals were buried with jewelry, weapons, usually arrowheads, armors, tools, mirrors and sometimes horses. You see, these mirrors didn't have to be only used for watching your own reflection, but also for sending flashing signals. And skeletons of both men and women showed signs of horseback riding. But not only that, 
also battle scars. In some of the bones, arrowheads were still embedded. There were also slashing wounds from swords, stabbing wounds from daggers or spears, and punctures from projectiles. For example, at southern Ukraine, around 130 female warrior tombs were found and they dated back to 5th or 4th century BC. Also at the cemetery of Mamegora in Ukraine, around a dozen women formed a part of light armed cavalry. Also in Ukraine, some female warriors had belts from bronze or iron plaques. In Central Asia and Southern Siberia, those belt plaques could also have been made from gold. And they could have had some fancy belt buckles ornamented with animals. And how can you recognize an Amazon woman in ancient Greek art? That is easy, she holds a moon-shaped shield. These fierce female warriors have been an inspiration for artists ever since the antiquity. And they are still today, including the Wonder Woman. And to all my ladies, channel your inner Amazon woman. Be a modern warrior. Fight for your rights. Thank you for watching this video and you know what to do. Like, subscribe, share, send to all and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!